Hey gang, Jane here with another crocheted granny square tutorial. Today we're getting our color vibe on and we'll be making the Adelaide square. I'll be working her in some vibrant jewel tones today. I love playing with color and this palette works really nicely with this square. But I encourage you to try your own color combinations as well, as these squares take on completely different looks depending on the colors that you use. This one starts with a center circular piece for the first seven rounds with simple stitches and chain spaces. Then on round eight, we square it off and add a few more rounds for border effect for a total of 12 rounds. My finished sample square measures nine inches. This square can be easily changed in size just by adding or subtracting border rounds. I'll be using five colors today and changing my colors every round. My square will be using an off-white, a green, a gold, a red, and a nice vibrant copper. I'll be using a worsted weight yarn and a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. Other tools you'll need are a pair of scissors and a darning needle to work in your ends. You can find more information on the pattern for the Adelaide Granny Square over on my blog. I'll leave a link in the description below. So gather your supplies and your favorite colors and let's dive into today's square. So I normally start with a magic ring, but today I'm going to do the chain four center, a little bit different. Sometimes people don't like the magic ring and the chain four center can be a nice alternative. So what we're going to do is go ahead and create a slip knot. So how I create my slip knot is just I create a loop with the cut end on top. I flip my loop down like a pretzel and then I go under the bar that's on the bottom here on the left hand side of it. And then I pull the two ends together and that's my slip knot. There's many ways to make a slip knot. For some reason that's how I learned and that's the fastest way that I know how to make one for me. So we're going to go ahead now and chain four to start our foundation ring. So go ahead and chain four, two, three, and four. And then we're going to join this into a circle to create our foundation ring. So we're going to take our hook and go back to that first chain, putting our hook under the loop. You can put it under the bump at the back as well. So you have the top loop and the bump at the back. And then you want to yarn over your hook, pull it through, and then go ahead and pull it through the loop on the hook as well. So it's a slip stitch. And now you've created your foundation ring little bit of a jumbly here, but there is a ring in the center there that we're going to work into. So moving ahead with round one, we keep the same color and we're going to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. This counts as our first double crochet and our first chain one space. Then we're going to work a double crochet into this ring. So you're going to go right into the center of the ring that you created. So yarn over, insert the hook into the middle of the ring and go ahead and work a double crochet. So you may have noticed that I worked over top of this end. I do that because then if I want to cinch up my ring as if I would for a magic ring, I can just pull on that and it'll cinch that hole together. You can leave the hole as well. It creates a nice airy effect or you can darn this in later and do the same thing. I like to work over my ends. It's kind of a habit for me. I try to not get caught up in that when I'm teaching you because it's just an extra level. Um, but you will see me sometimes working my ends in as I go. So now we have the chain four and our first double crochet in the ring. We're going to go and chain one. This is what we're going to do all the way around. We're going to work a double crochet chain one into the center ring until we have a total of 12. And that includes this chain four as part of our count. So currently, if we're looking at this, I already have two and I would need to work 10 more and I'll end up back here. I'll let you go ahead and work on that. And I'll meet you back here after you have 12 double crochet and 12 chain one spaces and we'll join our round. So here we are at the end of round one and now we can join and finish off our round. So you should have a total of 12 double crochet and 12 chain one spaces, which includes the chain four count. So we'll go one, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and I've ended with a chain 1. And now I want to slip stitch in the third chain of the beginning chain 4. So find count up the, to the third chain, 1, 2, and 3. Put your hook in there, yarn over your hook, pull through that chain and the one on the hook. And that's a slip stitch. And you've now joined your round one. Now you'll see you have a nice uh, hole in the center because we did a chain four. I worked my end in and I can cinch it up or I can leave it like that because we actually have a lot going on in that circle. And the nice airy look might be something that I'd like. So I'm going to leave it like that and we're going to move on to round two. So to finish this off, of course, I want to cut my yarn because I'll be starting another color. So I go about four inches and cut it. And then I go ahead and just pull that through and we'll darn this in later. So let's go ahead and get our green. That's what we're going to use for round two. So we want to join in any one of these chain one spaces. So just go ahead and pick one and we're going to pull up our yarn, leaving a nice uh, end there, probably another four inches that we can work in. So we pull up our loop and again this does not count as our first chain, we're just joining our yarn. Now we're ready to get working here. We want to chain one and then we want to work two single crochet into that same space that we joined in. So go ahead in and work two single crochets and then we want to work a chain one. And that's what we're going to do all the way around. Two single crochet into every one of these chain one spaces and then a chain one. So we're going to do that one more time. We're going to work two single crochet into the next chain one space and then we're going to do a chain one. So see how we're doing that all the way around. Two single crochet, chain one, two single crochet, chain one. We're going to do that in every single one of these chain one spaces all the way around. I will meet you back here. We will end with a chain one and then we will finish off the round. So we've reached the end of round two. We can see we have two single crochet and a chain one worked into every single one of these chain one spaces. So you have a total of 24 single crochets because you have 12 batches of two and you have 12 chain one spaces or yeah, you've created 12 more chain one spaces. So we've ended with a chain one and now we want to finish off our round. We're going to slip stitch in this first single crochet of the round. So put your hook in that first single crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop and pull through the loop on the hook and you finished round two. And again, we can cut our yarn because we're changing our colors about four inches and then go ahead and pull it through and we will work that in later or if you want to watch one of my videos where you work it in as you go I'll put those in the link below so you can follow along with that as well. So moving on to round three I have this nice gold color and I'm going to join in any one of these chain one spaces so I move a little further along so my ends don't get all stuck in the same place insert my hook into this chain one space, which is any one you choose, and we're going to pull up a loop. So now we've joined our gold and we're going to go ahead and chain one. Now I want to work a single crochet in that same chain one space that I just joined in. So go ahead and work a single crochet stitch. And now I'm going to chain two, one and two. And that's what we're going to do all the way around. See how easy the beginning of this square is? It's so nice because it's just single crochets and chain spaces. They're just done in a different combination. So we're going to go ahead and work a single crochet in the next chain one space. So go ahead, there's your single crochet. And then we're going to do a chain two. And you're going to do that all the way around single crochets into these chain one spaces and then a chain two to bridge to the next one. So work that all the way around. You're going to end up with 12 single crochet stitches and 12 chain two spaces. And when you get to the end of the round, you'll end with a chain two and then we're going to finish off the round. So 
go ahead and I will meet you here at the end of round three. So here we are at the end. I've ended up with a single crochet in the last chain one space and I have chain two and I'm ready to slip stitch to end my round. So I go to that first single crochet, I insert my hook in there and then I yarn over, pull through that stitch and the loop on the hook and that is my slip stitch to end my round. So I go ahead and cut my yarn and I pull that through and that's the end of round three. So now I have my nice red and I'm going to do round four. Round four I'm going to join in any one of these chain two spaces that I've created. So I'm just going to move around and pick one over here and I'm going to pull up a loop and then I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to work two single crochet into this chain two space. So go ahead and work two single crochet into that space and then I'm going to chain two. One, two. So this is what we're going to do all the way around. We're going to do two single crochets into these chain two spaces and then we're going to bridge them with a chain two. So let's do another one. Two single crochet into the next chain two space and then a chain two. And we're going to do that all the way around until we get to the end, ending with a chain two and then we will join our round. So see how these rounds are getting very similar. So I love this square because the first couple rounds are quite easy once you get the hang of them. So go ahead and work two single crochet into each chain two and then do a chain two all the way around. I'll meet you back here and we'll complete the round. Okay, we're at the end of round four and I have finished off with two single crochet in this last chain two space and a chain two. And now I want to slip stitch join into that first single crochet of the round. So insert your hook into that first single crochet, yarn over, pull through and pull through the loop on the hook. And you completed round four. We're going to go ahead and cut our yarn, pull it through and we're ready for round number five. So round number five, we're back to this off white color and I want to join in any one of these chain two spaces. So I move a little further along. I'm going to pick this one right here and I'm going to pull up a loop. Then I'm going to go ahead and chain one and now I want to work three single crochet into this chain two space. So we're kind of increasing outwards in our circle. So I need to add an extra single crochet to make that happen. So there's three single crochet in that first chain two. And then I want to go ahead and chain two to bridge it to the next chain two space. So that's what we're going to do all the way around. Three single crochet, chain two. So now work three single crochet into this next chain two space. So one, two, and three. And now you want to chain two, one and two. And this is what we're going to do all the way around into every one of these chain two spaces. You'll be working three single crochet and then bridging a chain two to the next one. Do this all the way around and I'll meet you back here. So here we are at the end of round five. I have finished off with three single crochet in this last chain two space and a chain two and I want to slip stitch into this first single crochet. So go ahead and insert your hook, pull up a loop and pull it through the loop on the hook. You have slip stitched your end of round. We go ahead and we cut our yarn and pull it through. So at this point you should have 36 single crochets because you have three in each one and there's 12. So 12 times three is 36 and you'll have 12 chain two spaces. Let's take a look at our square and see how far we've come. So you can see here that we have done to the off white. See how if we put it on top. You can see it there. So we've done this part of the circle and now we're going to move into this little bit larger stitch before we get to 
this squared part. So the next color we're going to want is this nice rust color and we're going to change it up and be using a different kind of stitch. So now I'm working with this rust color. I haven't used this one yet. I did use a gold, but this is a little bit different. Kind of staying in these nice almost autumn colors, these nice rich jewel tones. So let's go ahead now and join our yarn and we're going to join in any one of these chain two spaces. So let's see, I finished here. So let's move a little bit further along and join in this one. So any one that you pick is fine. Pull up a loop and then we're going to go ahead and get started here. This time we start with a chain three. So one, two and three. And this counts as our first double crochet. So we're not working with single crochets on this one. We're working with double crochets. And then I'm going to go ahead and do two more double crochet into that chain two space. So you're going to end up with what counts as three separate double crochets into this chain two space because that chain three counts as a double crochet. So there you are. You have your first three double crochets. Then you're going to chain two. So we end up with just a taller stitch here than our single crochets, but we're doing the same concept. So now we're going to go to the next chain two space and we're going to work three double crochet into that. So let's go ahead and do that. We work our first double crochet, then our next one. And then finally we work a third double crochet. And then we chain two. And this is what we're going to do all the way around. So instead of these single crochet batches, we're going to have a double crochet batch. So you're going to work three separate double crochet into the next chain two space. And then you're going to work a chain two. And you're going to do that all the way around until we get to the end of the round right here. You're going to end with a chain two and we will finish off this round together. I'll see you there. Okay, we're back at the end of round six and I have finished off with three double crochet in the last chain two space and a chain two. And now we're going to join our round and we're going to go into the third chain of our beginning chain three because that would be considered the top of the double crochet that it represents. You're going to yarn over and pull through a loop and pull through the loop on the hook to make your slip stitch join. Now you're going to cut your yarn at about the four inch mark and pull that through and you've completed the round. So we have another round that's going to be circular. We're going to do the green and it's just going to be straight single crochet all the way around. So let's grab our green and get going on that. So we're on to round seven and we have our green and we are going to join in any one of these chain two spaces. So I finished here and we're going to move a few more on to this one say, but you can pick any one of them. Pull up a loop. Hang on to that with your finger and thumb. And then we're going to go ahead and chain one. So now we're going to do two single crochet into this chain two space that we just joined into. So one and two. And now we're going to do a single crochet in each of the next three double crochet. So one, two, and three. So it actually gives you five single crochet and then that's what we're going to do all the way around. We're going to do two single crochet in the chain two space and then one single crochet into each of the double crochets. You're going to do that all the way around. So no chain stitches in this one. It's going to be straight single crochet all the way around, making sure you work two into the chain two space and one into each of these double crochet. So I will meet you back here at the end of the round and you should have 12 sets of five. So that should be 60 single crochet and I'll meet you back here to end the round. So here we are back at the end of the round and I have 60 single crochet all the way around and it's a nice solid ring of single crochets and I'm going to join with a slip stitch in the first single crochet. So insert your hook into that first single crochet yarn over, pull through and through the loop on the hook. And we're going to go ahead and cut our yarn about four inches and pull it through. And now we've completed the circular center 
to our square. So let's take a look at our finished square here. And we have done everything. If we put this one on top, you can see there's the green ring. We've done everything to here. So we've completed the circular center. Now we're going to square it off with our off white to create our square. And then we'll go ahead and do the borders afterwards. But the gist of the square will end here because this is squaring off our circle. So let's get going on that. So we're ready for round eight and that's our squaring off round. So we want to take our off white and we're going to join in a specific stitch this time. We're not going to pick just any stitch because of the way I want it to look, the finished look. I want the square and the circle to be lined. So what we're going to do is we finished here. This was joining in the first single crochet of the previous round. I want you to go one more over. So we're actually going to join in the second single crochet of the previous round. So you're going to insert your hook in there, the one right after where you did the slip stitch, and you're going to pull up your yarn. Now our corners are going to have trebles, which are a longer stitch than we've worked with yet. So we're going to go ahead and chain four and that will represent our first treble crochet. So one, two, three, and four. So now we want to work a treble into the same stitch that we joined in. We work the treble by wrapping the yarn twice around the hook. So see how I have two wraps and the original loop. Now we're going to take the hook and put it into that same stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now you have four loops on the hook. So we're going to work our way through this by going two at a time. So yarn over and pull through two of the loops. You'll have three left. Yarn over, pull through two of the laps, loops. <laughs> You'll have two left. And yarn over and pull through the last two loops. That's a treble. So now this first four chain counts as a treble and you have an actual treble. And now we're going to move into double crochets. So as we work our way around our square, we need different heights of stitches to square it off. So the treble is the longest. And now we're going to go to doubles. So we go ahead and yarn over once. Working into the next single crochet stitch, you're going to do a double crochet. And then you're going to go into the next stitch with a double crochet. So you actually have two double crochets over the next two stitches. So let's just look back here. We have the two trebles in one stitch and then a double crochet and a double crochet. Now we're going to move to a half double crochet. So yarn over again, insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop. Just like for a double crochet, you have the three loops, but with the half double crochet, yarn over and pull through all three at once. And then we're going to do that again in the next stitch. So another half double crochet. And see how we're squaring off this part of the circle. So we want to do five single crochets over the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. So now we have the different heights of stitches as we're squaring off our circle. Now we're going to work our way back again by making them taller to make it to the next corner. So we're going to do a half double crochet in the next stitch and another half double crochet in the next stitch. So we have two of those. Now we want to do a double crochet in the next stitch and then a double crochet in the next one. So again, two double crochets. And now we're back to the next corner. I want to work two trebles into this next stitch. So two stitches into this one stitch. So again, your treble is twice around the hook. Insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then work your way through two at a time till you get to one stitch. And then again, another treble. So two more times around your hook. In you go to the same stitch, 
and work your way two at a time. And now you have the two treble stitches into one stitch. First half of our corner has just been worked. Then we're going to chain three. That's going to allow us to turn the corner. And we worked one side. We've actually worked one full repeat. This is what we're going to work on each of the sides. So let's walk our way through this. Let me pull up the other one and just show you what we've done in the finished square. So looking at this square, what we've done here is across here. So you can see how the different heights of stitches let you turn the corners. It lets you kind of corner it out. So we have the long stitches here, and then we work our way to the short stitches, and then we work our way back to the long stitches. So this is what we've done so far. We want to continue to do it here, here, and here. So let me work you down this row as well. And then I'll let you complete this section and this section, and I'll meet you back at the end. So let's go back and do one more of these. So we're going to work the second half of our corner. And what we're going to do is two trebles into the next stitch. So not the same stitch. This one has two trebles in it. And then we're going to work two trebles in the next one. So we've done our chain three and we want to wrap the yarn around twice and insert into the next stitch and work our way two at a time to the top of our treble. Yarn around twice again and into that same stitch. These are the only ones that go into the same stitch. And then we work one in each stitch across the top. So there's our corner. And now we're working across this edge. So we're going back to double crochets now. So two double crochets, but they're worked in separate stitches, always in separate stitches across the edge. And we did our two double crochets. So now I want to work two half double crochets into separate stitches. So that's our first one. Then we want to work another one. And now we're up to the single crochets and I have five of those that I want to work across the next five stitches. So go ahead and work one, two, three, four, and five. So there we've worked across the center part of this edge and now we're going to get longer with our stitches again. We want to do a half double crochet and another half double crochet. Now we want to do two double crochets in two separate stitches. That's one and that's two. And now we're back to our corner and the reason I had you line up perfectly is because I wanted the corners to be on these, line up with these chain spaces. So that's why I had you start exactly where I asked you to start here so that these corners would line up with these spaces. Just gives it a nicer look. So now we're going to work two treble into the next stitch. So wrapping your yarn around twice, insert into the next stitch and finish off your treble and do another treble into that same stitch. Oops. Oh, and it fell off my, try again. Yarn over twice. Sometimes if I move too slow, it falls off my hook. There we go. And now we want to chain three and that completes this edge. So now we want to go ahead across this edge, completing the second half of the corner into this next stitch. There'll be two trebles. Go ahead with your double crochets, half double crochets, single crochets, and then again back half double crochets, double crochets, and your treble corner. So work that across here, and then you're going to do it again. And when we get to this end, the first half of the corner is worked. So I'll meet you back here before you complete your last two trebles and we'll finish the round together. So here we are back at the end of our squaring off round and I have finished with a double crochet so far. I have one more stitch to work and it can get a little confusing because it's the stitch you joined in. So you just pull up that join a little tighter and you'll see it there. That's the stitch that you want to work into and you want to work two treble into it. So wrap your yarn around twice, 
go into that stitch before where you started and you're going to finish with two treble stitches into that last stitch and now you want to do the chain three one two and three and now you want to slip stitch in the fourth chain because it'll be at the top of your treble in the fourth chain of that beginning chain four that represents your treble and you just want to pull up a loop and pull it through the loop on the hook that's your slip stitch now we want to cut the yarn about four inches pull it through and you have done the squaring off so it might look a little wonky at the moment and that's why i like to add the borders because it gives it some stability to your square because right now the bulk of it is your circle and then you just have this little squaring out that's happening here and and you add on these borders it'll give it a nice solid square look so the next round we're going to use our red so now that we've reached our square we're going to start joining in the corners and now you can pick any corner that you want so i finished over here i'm going to move over to this corner so that i don't have too many ends in one place and i'm going to choose my red and i'm going to pull up a loop make sure you leave enough of an end there darn in and we're going to go ahead and chain three because this round is going to have double crochets in it so one two and three and that represents our first double crochet now i'm going to work another double crochet in this same chain three corner so go ahead and yarn over and work a double crochet into that same space so you have two double crochets because you're counting that chain three as your first one now i'm going to work a double crochet in every single stitch across to the next chain three space so you're just going to do straight double crochets into every single stitch so when i work my borders i kind of um, decide on different heights of stitches this time i decided on the double crochet because i wanted it to be a nice wide colored border to pull out some of the thinner colors that are in here so i like going with different widths to give a little bit of variety but you could just be doing this as a single crochet or even a half double crochet depending on the width that you want of this color so see how i'm just working my way across into every single stitch and they are all double crochets so i'm just taking you across to the next corner where we will turn the corner and then you'll know exactly what we're doing all the way around so every edge will just have these double crochets so i'm almost to the corner here i have two more stitches and then i've reached my chain three corner here we are so i worked them all the way across there are actually 17 double crochet in between the corners and then you have the two here and you're going to have two here so that'll be uh, 21 across each of your edges so let's go ahead and do two double crochet into this chain three space and then you're going to do another chain three one two and three which helps us turn the corner and then we're going to do two more double crochet into this chain three space to create a full corner and there's your full corner right there and you can see you've come all the way along this edge and turned a full corner so this round then is fairly self-explanatory you're just going to go across double crocheting in every stitch when you hit these chain three corners work two double crochet chain three two double crochet to turn your corner into this space and then go ahead and work a double crochet in every stitch again you're going to do that all the way around and i'll meet you back here at the end of the round and see we work the first half of our corner here we will work the last half of our corner and join the round so i'll meet you back here at the last double crochet stitch in the regular stitches and we'll finish the corner together all right i've gone all the way around with my double crochets and i've worked my corner 
two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet in each of the corners. I've come up to my last corner, so I worked my last double crochet in my last treble stitch here. Now I'm going to work two double crochets in this chain three space that I joined in to make the first half of the corner. So two double crochet, now chain three. And now I'm going to join in the top of this chain three, beginning chain three. So go into the third chain of that beginning chain three. Pull up a loop and pull through the loop on the hook. That's your slip stitch and that joins your round. And now I'm going to cut my yarn, pull that through and let's take a look at this. So there now you can see I've created a bit of a border on my square. So let's go back and look at this square. So you can see that's this part here, the red. I've done that and see how it kind of squares it out a little bit more kind of gives it a little bit of um, solidness to the square. My original square, now remember I'm using a worsted weight yarn, so from the off-white square I would be about a seven inch square and then this adds pretty much another inch onto it so now it's an eight inch square and I think uh, this completed square is a nine inch, yeah it's a nine inch square. So depending on what size you want your square to be, you could stop at the off white and just do a row of single crochet around, or you can add this nice red double crochet to get an extra inch out of it. And then you can add these nice little borders on to keep it even more. And what I like about this is when I first made this square, I kind of ended here with a single crochet border and I thought it just needed a little more pizzazz. So when I played around with it, I liked this edging but I felt like the border kind of fell into the edging. So what I did is I did a thicker border. So the double crochet is here. Give it a little more of a interesting look to it before you head into these single crochet chain two spaces. So we are finished this round and we're going to move on to these nice, look I have yarn everywhere here, these nice edgings here. And I'll walk you through them, but you could do as many or as few as of these as you want in as many or as few different colors as you want to create a bigger square or or not a bigger square. So that is what I like about these edgings is they just let you mix up the size of the square depending on what you might need. If you're mixing it with another square or if you have a specific project that requires a certain size of square, this is your flexibility in here. So let's go ahead into the next round. I'm going to be using the rust again. So this is a really common edging that I use on a lot of my squares. It's a single crochet chain two. So it gives it a nice airy space and it dresses it up a little. So we're going to start in any one of these chain three corners. So uh, I ended here. So I'm going to go to this one just to get away from that end. And leaving a nice four inch end, I'm going to join my rust color. So pull up a loop right there. And I'm going to go ahead and chain one and single crochet in that same space that we just joined in. So there we are. We've joined it with a single crochet. So now I'm going to chain two and I'm going to skip over that first double crochet and work into the second double crochet of this edge. And I'm going to work a single crochet. So there we have single crochet in the chain three space, chain two, skip over the next double crochet and working into the next double crochet work a single crochet. That's what I'm going to do all the way across. So chain two, miss the next stitch, skip over this next stitch right here and single crochet in the next one. So you create this nice little kind of almost like a pico edging, but it's kind of stretched out across so it's not too pico -y. So let's keep going. Chain two, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next one. Chain two, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next one. And yes, that's my cat meowing in the background. So keep doing that until you get over to this chain three space and I'll meet you there and we'll turn the corner. So here we are. I've worked a single crochet, chain two, skip this last double crochet before the corner 
And now you're going to work into the chain three space with a single crochet. Then we're going to chain two this time which we've been doing chain two, but I mean for the corner, it's not a chain three, it's a chain two. And then we're going to work single crochet into that same chain three space again. So that creates our corner, which is a single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the same space. Then I'm going to chain two and start working across our next edge, which means that we are going to skip this first double crochet and we're going to work into the next double crochet and then chain two and we're going to continue like that again all the way across here till you reach the next corner at which point you will do a single crochet chain two single crochet then you're going to work down this edge work your corner single crochet chain two single crochet and then work across your last edge and at this point I will meet you here and we can finish off this round together okay we've worked our way all the way around and now we're back to the end of the round here where we started the beginning of the round. I did a single crochet chain two. We're going to skip over this last double crochet and work into the chain three space as a single crochet chain two. And then we already have a single crochet in there where we started. So that's the other half of the corner. We're going to slip stitch into that first single crochet and you've completed your round. So let's cut our yarn and pull it through. And again, like I said, your other option is to keep on going with this color as well if you want a larger square, but you don't want a, a bunch of colors on the edge. There's lots of options here that you could do it differently. So that's the end of that round. And the next one we're gonna use green. So now we're going to do the same thing with the green. So we started here. I'm going to go to the next corner because we're going to join in a corner chain two space. So it has to be a corner chain two space, not just any one of these. We're joining in a corner. If it's confusing, then I would join. If I was writing these, I would say join in the same uh, chain two space that you just finished. But I like to go to the next corner. So make sure you're going into the corner chain two space and you're going to pull up. We're working with green. You're going to pull up your green and you're going to chain one and single crochet in that same corner chain two space. Then we're going to chain two and then we're going to move along our edge here and we're going to work into the next chain two space. So the nice thing here is that we're only working into the chain two spaces. We're going to work a single crochet and then chain two. And then you move to the next chain two space, single crochet in that one, and then chain two. And that is what we're gonna do all the way around, except at the corners, of course, you're gonna work into these corners, you're gonna work the same thing as you did here, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, in order to turn the corner. But everywhere else, you'll be working single crochets into the chain two spaces, and chain twos to bridge them. So one more time here, we're gonna go single crochet into the next chain two space. So you're not working into any of these stitches themselves and then chain two. So do that all the way around, making sure that at every corner you work single crochet, chain two, single crochet into that same chain two space. And I will meet you back at the end to finish off the round. So we've worked our green all the way around, making sure our corners are single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the same single crochet, chain two stitch edging that we did at the previous round. And now I'm going to finish off by, I ended with a chain two here. I'm going to single crochet in the same corner space that I joined in and then chain two and slip stitch in that first single crochet that we created to end our round. We're going to cut our yarn and pull it through. So let's take a look here at what we've done so far. We've done our circle. We've squared it out with our off white. We've done a nice thick round of red in double crochets. And then we've done these single crochet chain two borders. So this first rust one was into the double crochet stitches. 
And then the green one just went into the whatever we did here. So we only worked into the chain two spaces. Now in the finished version, I have one more round. I did the off white and it is done exactly the same as the green. So you'll start in a corner and you'll do your single crochet join with the off white and then you'll work exactly what we just did with the green. So I won't go over that again because it's exactly the same round as the green and you can do as many or as few of these as you want. I kind of liked the idea of ending it off with the off white and I would probably use this in uh, a blanket and I could make them all and then just join them all with the off white and that would make a really pretty blanket with all the colors. So I liked the idea of adding these extra colors around the outside because it really kind of emphasized the inside. So you can go ahead and finish off that last round with the off white or you can leave it like this, whatever you want. At this point, this round can be done as many or as few times as you like to finish off your square. So get creative and make it the way that you want it. So have fun with that and enjoy the Adelaide square. And that completes the Adelaide Granny Square, another great one for blankets and home decor. Check out my blog for more ideas on how I use my granny squares. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel so you're sure to catch all my tutorials as they come out. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you in the next tutorial.